War is fought against an unknown enemy. Even in that moment when the trigger is pulled, the bayonet is thrust, the enemy is unknown. Whether it is from a plane or a boat or the ground, the war is fought against an unknown enemy. As close as you are, when you feel their breath fade and you see them fall down, the war is fought against an unknown enemy. If a war was fought against an enemy you knew, you would not have to fight. If you knew the man who fell at your bullets, you would not have fired them. New Zealand soldiers of the First World War fought against an unknown enemy. Eighteen and a half thousand young men went to fight in a conflict they couldn't comprehend against an enemy they didn't know, and they didn't return. If the men and boys could fully comprehend the consequences of their actions, I doubt they'd have gone in droves to booths to enlist in the war, naively thinking it was an adventure. Naivety is a cannon from which our youngest men were shot in 1914 and into a war they didn't need to be in. The First World War was motivated by some suspect warmongering. It wasn't because an impassioned government couldn't stand another government. It wasn't a war of morals, and it definitely was not a war on the New Zealand way of life. One story goes that when a couple of New Zealanders were captured by the Ottomans, the Ottomans asked, where are you from? New Zealand, they replied. Where? Some German troops translated for the Ottomans. New Zealand, a couple of islands in the Pacific Ocean. Never heard of it. The Ottomans hadn't even heard of New Zealand before. The Ottoman Empire and New Zealand were two completely different worlds, each one seeming like a surreal fantasy land to the other. How can you feel threatened? and justify a war against a people who exist in almost an entirely different reality. A young man, he lives in Ekatahuna, or Dunedin, or Auckland. He's training to be a farmer, or a baker, or a builder. He has one brother, or two sisters, or he's his parents' only child, and he goes off to war at Gallipoli, where he kills a man. Let's imagine another young man. He's just turned 20 and life isn't easy. He lives rurally and he has to work hard to make sure the farm generates enough to support his family. He has a reasonable sized family too. A younger brother and sister, his older brother, his mum and dad and his grandfather all live with him at home. His older brother is already off fighting in the war. He doesn't know where. His father is a traditional man. He's definitely instilled some, perhaps, old-fashioned values into him. He knows a girl. They'll probably get married. Not a lot of options where he is, but there's something about her which makes her the only one anyway. But he can't stay on the farm. He's off to join the same war that his brother is already fighting in. He doesn't yet know that his brother was killed in action. It takes a while for that information to reach the family. But it doesn't matter now, his family is far away. The farm, the future he was meant to have, all a long way away from Anzac Cove. He's a soldier now, first and foremost. Before being a boyfriend, or a brother, or a son, he's a soldier for the Ottoman Empire. I don't think I'd have it in my heart to kill him. I couldn't shoot dead a man who had a lifestyle so similar to that of the people I know. He's a farm boy, just like the Ikatahuna lad. He comes from a different place, his skin is a different color, and he speaks a different language, but he's as human as I am. He's as human as anyone I know. Like our soldiers, he too was sucked into a war and stuck on a battlefield far away from the things that made him more than a soldier, things that made him human. Maybe I'm being precious, Maybe if he was shooting at me and only one of us were going to live, I'd give it my best shot. We count our losses in numbers. Eighteen and a half thousand dead. Forty-one thousand wounded. 
but a number fails to reveal the extent of the human loss, the pain of widows of men from both sides, fatherless children of men from both lands, widows and children in New Zealand and Germany and Turkey going to sleep without someone they loved, Men and boys from completely different cultures in different places who feel the same human anguish. I don't understand a war mentality. I don't understand the fierce values that made men go off to the other side of the world. I don't understand the mortal fear they must have felt when bullets hit the ground around them. But I think I understand something about people. The Ottomans throwing tobacco over the trenches to the Anzacs. The Anzacs replying with chocolate, both exchanging letters. That is something that people do. Gunning someone down is something that no one should have to do. Being gunned down is something that no one should have to face. It's not human. Our soldiers fought for months on end to rip away someone else's humanity so as to not have their own humanity ripped away. And they struggled for a higher cause that was paralleled by the cause that the other men were fighting for. Men lost their lives on soil far away from their own homes for a greater love. History suggests we don't learn from our past mistakes very well, so I won't pretend that we'll never face a misguided war again. And anyway, I want to fight. I want to fight with the same glaring passion, the same strong beliefs. I want to fight with the fear behind me and to get a job done. But I want to fight not with guns and widows, but with words and ideas. Because I want to fight for people. And I think that's what our soldiers wanted to fight for too.